we are at the end of this series on training, the, at least part number one, because there will be another one where we go much more into layers and so on. Actually, that was not covered in the PDF file, but I ended up creating a few layers here. So what I will do now is to take you into the JSON editor quite a lot. This is also off PDF, off scripts. So this whole video is just improvising. Let's go back to the home screen and create a new project. So I'll just click here, create a new project of pissed. We may break our necks and activate it, but hopefully we won't break any bones or backs or whatever. And I'll add a panel. I'll basically do the same as I just did before to show you what is going on uh, underneath, under the hood here by the JSON editor. So this is all that I did in the beginning, going to a custom configuration. Well, hmm, okay. Actually, this is what you get by default. So what does that mean? It means if you go to the configuration tab, you see sort of what you mm, would have seen before, that we have a root layer. And then on that layer, we have something else here that is including something and there's a lot of things going on and so on. And if you press these small buttons that says edit raw, then you get into a JSON editor where you can see all this configuration is lined up. But sometimes th this is not all it takes to run a PDC controller. It is actually at certain points, you can see it's importing layer files. And that means here we are creating a bunch of layers by basically by reference to this one. I'm pretty sure you can sort of hold down a modifier key and get to that. Yeah, smart. My development team is amazing. And then you could just study this as much as you want. But I am not sure that you will learn a whole lot from that. So I just want to create a custom configuration like we did before. So we'll just do training config create. And then we go to configuration and we'll click edit raw. So if you look at what is the the layer really um, that we were just having, and now I think we can go back let me see, where are we? This would yeah, probably a nice place to be, but let's just shut this one down. So from here, we are um, looking at these two layers. And when we get to this point, training config, you see this is an external file. This is a different file. This is also a different file. But all the other stuff is what we get over here. Let's see if we can see a reflection of that. Maybe it's helpful to actually have this in a separate window. So let's just organize ourselves. You can see the name of the root layer down here. That's fine. Then we have layers and we have this layer and this layer. They are called default blue pearl config and include training config. Then they have themselves, as we kind of expect, indication of other layer files they are including. Okay. So the one for the blue pill is if we click this one, we'll see quite a lot of stuff. And that's actually what gives us, if we go back over here, that's what gives us all the things that go into these displays. Could be fun to study, right? If you are crazy about graphics, you could study the display graphic definitions here because they they make some pretty funky um, compositions where you can, uh, yeah, you, you, you should study this yourself. So let's just um, ignore that. Now, I am a little bit lost here if we can actually go back. I don't know if we can. I don't know how to. Oh, okay. So I just reloaded that one. That's great. Now, the, the one called training config that is for the uh, the PDC fly that we just created, that, that file is right here. And it's probably pretty empty. So you see that layer file we just included is uh, training config here. That's That's the file right here. And it is sort of limited what we see. Now, <clears throat> in the videos that we have just gone through, what we did on this one was to, uh, let me see, we we clicked on a button, we created a behavior over here, like a six, button number six, and I wanna see how that actually looks in the JSON over here. So I'll just reload this page, and it now looks like this. So adding this behavior a six, created a section called HVC behaviors, HWC behaviors, Hardware component behaviors. Makes sense, doesn't it? And A6 is an alias we have chosen. It is referring to the Skahoy dummy master behavior that just shows you that. And it has no I.O. reference yet. The HVC key map is something we'll get back to in different videos, but it is basically saying that on panel number one, Hardware component number six, associate that with the 
alias A6. So this means that we don't need to worry about what A6, I mean, we can use the name A6, all the places to define behaviors for this one. And then finally it get maps, gets mapped to a specific hardware component on the panel. And that's a pretty cool feature because that means configurations we make using aliases can be mapped onto multiple different controllers by basically, yeah, routing them to whatever hardware component on the actual panel. What is that whole thing with, you know, panel number one? Yeah, you can imagine this would be panel number one, but what if we had a second panel? Actually, we have two panels because the blue pill turns out to also register itself as a panel, even though it is uh, this little guy. So, and it is in fact, in this case, panel number one. Let's just quickly go back to the home tab. Blue pill is panel number one. And you see that if you open it up, it has panel ID number one right there. This one, PDC Fly, is panel ID number two. So how can our configuration code here ever talk about panel number one? Well, because if we go back and look at what is before this one, namely this code that was including our training config, you see that we have another HVC key map, which is what this one states is it's saying, it's saying that anything that is called panel number one, underscore P1, anything inside the training config will now be mapped over to panel number two. So that is a way to then keep a namespace that is easy, like panel number one all the time inside a file, and then we can map it to panel number two, three, four, or 100, if that was the ID that this panel had. So there you got that explanation. Isn't that nice? Let's uh, try a few other things, uh, and then we can always go back and reload here because that seems to be pretty helpful. Now let's uh, create the variable that we did in this uh, previous video. So we'll just create that, um, edit it, change options, add three options, write in vmix, presets, presets, and cam cell. Okay, yeah, you get it. I still admit it. All right, so um, I'm curious, how is that JSON code looking? So I'll reload this page. And you see that now we have had variables, a variable section added. So variables are designed in, uh, they are created and defined inside these uh, codes. Here we have the variable menu, the name is menu. The, this is the reference we need to use like, mm, okay, Let's just put in an exclamation mark so that you can really see the save current file. So if we go over here and we, uh, I guess, click here uh, to see the variable again. Now I'll just reload. Okay. Um, click this one. You see it says menu exclamation mark because I just saved that over here. And uh, we have the option list and it also is defaulting to the first value. That is a, a normal behavior that it has. So that's, um, and, and anything else? Nothing else, okay, everything else was the same. What if we click this one and we start doing stuff to it, like adding feedback, like uh, saying that we want this button to have a certain color like green. So how does that look in the JSON reload? It looks like this. It added a section now that's called act, uh, feedback default and it has a, a color object, color code, green. What if it was RGB? What if, I mean, we can actually pick RGB. No, wait, that was random. Um, hmm? We don't have an RGB color picker here. Hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, forget that promise. We cannot pick R RGB. I actually think we can, but um, I wonder if, you know, you feel like the, like, like being a little, it's protocol and and then trying the uh, the luck with things like let's try this and see if if, if that works if that <sighs> something at least happened uh, what if we just want a pure red is that gonna work for us uh, difficult to say what if we do this what happens it it seems to to have some sort of effect on this button. Now, actually, it probably would display a little bit better if we had it not dimmed, but on, because when it is dimmed, I can sh I can share this with you. When you are in uh, on intensity, that's like the color full on. And if you are in dimmed intensity, we are toning it down. It makes a lot of sense on a hardware panel physically, because that's just how bright is the LED. 
But on software, it tends to look sort of different because in this case, it's actually just getting darker. But it, it works to signal the undimmed off state of a button. Uh, but surely in this case, as we are manipulating the value of the color, it not so much maybe. I think we may even support this, like the short form. So let's just test that. Yeah, actually we did. And then this one which should give us a full yellow. And then if we do this, we should get some magenta stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, we can use those color codes. Once again, we broke the rules and found a way to uh, cheat uh, the system and not use these. But I, I can tell you why we have these index colors, these color names. That is because we have spent time to compare colors on a panel. And that guarantees you two buttons next to each other will always look different if you have green and mint. There is a difference that you can see when they're next to each other. So this is kind of the, the, the range of colors that for, for which we guarantee that kind of uh, ability to, to distinguish them from each other in, uh, on, on a real controller. How does that look in the code? Well, still sort of the same. I added intensity on, there's this one. We can continue and just add a few things like a title uh, line, title, 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 right there. Um, it says behavior path. Uh, we can uh, edit it, I guess, type in stuff. Ooh. Let's get rid of that stuff, submit. And uh, how does that look? Reload. It looks like we have now display text. You see, it's just going on like this. It's it's actually pretty easy to see this whole thing happening. And um, let's try to create a few sub layers, just because that was a part of what I decided to do last time. So we'll create a child layer here, call it VMAX. Now we have this sub layer. How does that look in the code? Let's just reload. And now it turns out that apart from variables, we also have this key map and then we have layers, which is an array of objects that are layers inside themselves. So there you have vmix layer and let's just create a layer, layer below. We call that presets. We call another layer below camera select. Wow, this keyboard is killing me. Uh, uh, um, camera select. Okay, now that little include file thing. Are we adventurous or not? Let's just try that out. So actually, it looks like we are. Let's see what happens in the file. Now, um, our layers are like this. Uh, VMAX and presets are there, but where is camera select? Well, it's actually just organized a different place because you have it here. It's called import layer files. And there, there is a new file created called camera select that we could go to by holding down a modifier key and then clicking it. And then we are here with camera select. We could put in an exclamation mark. I guess we could save this. Thank you. And then we could go back here and navigate back into training config. So if we um, look over here, it's already updated the title actually. Thank you so much for that. And uh, it's also a different color because we put this, this layer into a different file. So, uh, and you have a direct pathway, by the way, to editing that uh, file by just clicking here, you get straight into the, the camera select file that we were in uh, just a moment ago. Let's quickly um, try to set up some definitions of things. So if we are on this layer and we create behavior, we just create it for these buttons on the VMAX layer. So how would that look inside our um, our file here? So let's let's check that one out. Um, on the VMAX layer, we now see that we, we still have, yeah, please. Okay, so we still have the VMAX layer and we have the presets layer, but now on the VMAX layer, we have a, an object like HVC behaviors a one up to six with just references to the dummy master behavior and the name set and an empty IO reference. And now you begin to see that things are repeating themselves, right? Because anything you can put inside the layer array right there is the same as what you basically already are standing on right here. That means you can put variables in. We could put in this definition of variables inside this layer if we wanted because that object belongs in there. If you want to see that it belongs, hold down control, press shift, sorry, space, you can see variables and then you could start defining them. So that helps you to validate that this is allowed in the structure. Let's format the code to save the file. 
And um, that actually means, as you can see now, a new variable popped up called menu here. And um, by the way, the reason why this is blanked out is because there is already a variable called menu down here. And this one does not have its, let me see, there's a show, oh, let's just get rid of that one. There's, there's this one called always define. And if you set that one for a variable, that means this, this is the one that gets used inside of, of this one. We are definitely in advanced territory right now, but variables are super cool because they are scoped by the tree. And it means that the location in that tree de defines which part of the tree they'll be visible in. But you can also define variables closer to the root in the tree. And if you do so, then in, in most cases by default, unless this flag is set for any variables out there, that variable will now be dominating, if you will, or take over and be the one that defines how the others are using. And that, that means, for instance, if you are using a variable for joystick sensitivity on a PTC controller, which would be included in separate uh, branches of the tree, creating that same named variable closer to the root could then basically take over and, and set the value for all of them out in the branches. But to make sure that you can protect the independence of a variable like this one out in a branch, then you can always you can set this flag called always define. So this variable will be able to to guarantee that I am the one who will dominate from this place in the tree and towards the branches or the, the leaves of the tree. Um, so that's what this one does, but we will disable it now. And advanced concept, advanced concept, warning, warning, warning. So um, let's just remove that again. Hey guys, this is, uh, it could go on forever like this. The, the JSON code is, I, I would do the same. Maybe just, you know, build something up and explore how the JSON code looks because it's such a, nice way to, um, to to progressively learn the, the structure and the meaning of things in, in the JSON code. But I really want to invite you guys who are excited about this to try it out because this is what we can do really, really well right now. It does not depend on any UIs that we are adding, but we are adding more of those. We are adding more nice and easy features to the system, but the underlying architecture is in place and is absolutely awesome.